So consistency, consistency, consistency. This is the point, right? The thing that makes science work and, you know, that makes our understanding of the objective world work absolutely is this idea that we get some kind of consistent, consensual understanding that integrates across all of our different subjective experiences and pulls out what is kind of consensual, consistent uh, uh, that we agree on across all of our individual idiosyncratic selves. Um, and this boils down to re reproducibility, this effect that uh, if I do an experiment in my lab and then somebody else does an experiment in their lab and we have an exact recipe for how to do the experiment and, you know, don't make too many mistakes, <laughs> then uh, the results should come out the same, okay? Um, and in fact, that happens over and over again all the time. Okay, so that is science. Science is all about this ability to take a experiment and run it again to, to confirm it, to reproduce it, to replicate, to make sure that something that somebody else reports is actually kind of, you know, objectively repeatable. It's true because it can be reproduced. The scientific method, then, if we kind of put all these pieces together, is, you know, you have some kind of, like, observation, something that you want to ask a question about, some phenomenon of interest, right? And from that, you have to form some kind of hypothesis, and we'll get back to that in a second. But the key thing that the hypothesis does pragmatically is it generates predictions, something that you're actually going to measure and test, right? That's the key thing. So then you can go out and, and collect the data. And the key thing is that you have these reproducible, reproducible procedures. You tell people, uh, here's what you do. Okay, you go, you get this flask, you put the stuff, you know, whatever. Um, and so uh, you have some kind of, uh, uh, you know, method, method section in a paper is all about this. Um, and then you go and you analyze the data and you run statistics and you compute these kind of fundamental basic statistical tests that, that tell you did what happened in your experiment kind of, uh, is it different than what you would expect from chance, from random kind of crazy stuff happening, okay? And there is a lot of randomness in the world and we, you know, it's quite possible with quantum physics that it's really fundamentally random at some level. But um, in the face of all that noise and that randomness, real stuff happens. And um, you have these statistical tests that basically say, did something real happen or, could it just be chance, right? And is it unlikely that it was due to chance? You can never say for sure. You're never quite certain. Um, even in physics all the time, they have these experiments that come up with like something that seems like it's gonna be real. It's like the odds of it being due to chance are like one in 10,000, okay? Like really low probability. And then you just wait a few years and all of a sudden, boom, it was chance, and, and that's why you don't really trust any single result in science. You, again, look for reproducibility, repeatability, what has been replicated many times. That's the kind of stuff you believe in. So that's the kind of conclusions you draw is, you know, was your hypothesis supported by the uh, result or not? So here's some problems with the scientific method. First of all, you know, whatever, you make an observation, that's fine. Uh, the key step that's really hard in science is actually forming a hypothesis. And this is something that if you go on in science, you'll discover that people uh, in science get to make up their own questions. And it's kind of weird. It's like, what are the questions we're asking? We're asking the questions that we ourselves make up. It's like, where do we get these questions? Uh, we make them up, sorry. <laughs> so it's the fun part about science but it's also kind of weird, kind of subjective, right? So the hypothesis is actually kind of, you know, where a theoretician gets involved um, in principle. Uh, everybody can be a theoretician though. And so, you know, this idea of kind of crunching a bunch of different phenomena and kind of putting it together in a systematic way, this is really, you know, what Einstein did. And, and this is kind of like the, the, the hard part of science. Um, and because it is kind of subjective and it is kind of challenging and it's not something you can sort of say, well, here's how you do it. You do this, this and this. It's not like the method section. And that's the key thing. The method section 
you're supposed to make it very straightforward. Anybody can do this. There is no method to coming up with a hypothesis. That is kind of a weak link in the whole scientific process. Uh, it's also the most important link in the whole process of coming up with these hypotheses. So Robert Prisig in Zen and the Art of Motorcycle Maintenance uh, got too philosophical, thought about this a little too hard, um, and uh, and really was kind of you know uh, dumbfounded by this kind of uh, subjectivity of the hypothesis itself. And how could science be founded in this objective understanding, be founded on something that's so subjective and so kind of quirky? So then you go and collect the data, analyze the data, find everybody loves data. Data is just, you know, this is, if you, if you want to go get ahead in science, generate data. Everybody loves data. If you want to have a hard time in science, become a theorist. I'm a theorist. I have a hard time. It's like, you know, I, I come up with these computer models. People are like, it's not data. It's like a model. Who cares? You know, they want data. Everybody appreciates data. Data are facts. Um, and again, like, you know, these hypotheses, these are kind of my models. My models are hypotheses. Um, and they don't, you know, they don't count for much until they have been validated by data. And the conclusions you know, two people can look at the same finding and actually draw opposite conclusions. Again, it's a big uh, point point of subjectivity in the whole scientific process. Not as big as perhaps the hypothesis point, but also still is. Science is always wrestling with the the fact that people are subjective. We have our unique subjective perspectives. We have our own biases. Um, it takes kind of, you know, uh, an ill-defined process to come up with hypotheses. Uh, people can, can draw different conclusions based on their biases. Those things are fundamentally subjective. And, and therefore, science itself, which creates objective reality for us, this, this model of how we create uh, understanding of objective reality, does have these kind of holes in it. Um, yeah, and let's not talk about the measurement problem in quantum physics, which is a whole other can of worms there. But um, so, yeah, so that's why psychology is actually really important for understanding uh, science in general, because, in fact, the very bedrock of the scientific method is has these kinds of subjective elements. And if we understand more about how our subjective minds work, maybe we'll understand science a little bit better. The bottom line, consistency, 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 okay? Uh, and, and so, you know, there are good ways of understanding what a good hypothesis is. A good hypothesis is something that is consistent with other data, uh, that is consistent with other theories, and, and that kind of ties together a lot of different facts in a kind of, you know, simple, overarching way. Um, and, and this is known as like Occam's razor, this principle of we should have simple explanations, no simpler, but simple explanations to account for the data. That's a, a quote attributed to Einstein. Um, and so, uh, so yeah, so, uh, that's how it should work. We know a good hypothesis in the sense when we see it, but it's also doesn't tell us exactly how to come up with it.